Um, so just a quick little introduction. My name is Danae Gothard and I am an elementary ed tech coach. I, um, I service this year, uh, Sunrise, Crescent and East Sandy. Uh, this is my ninth year as an ed tech coach. Sounds kind of crazy to say, but um, we're excited that you're here. And um, again, we'll, we'll be recording this so you have access to it later. Um, Christina, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? And then Cindy, you can introduce yourself too. Yeah, I'm Christina Van Dam. I have the last two years been an ed tech coach. And this year, I'm now called a TPAC coach, which means I'm an achievement, achievement coach and an ed tech coach in one. So I do both roles. And I'm really excited to be here with you ladies. I'm Cindy. I'm at Willow Springs, and um, I'm the achievement coach, and I've been here for a while. <laughs> All right. Okay, just a couple things before we dive into the meat of our training. Um, if you have questions, there is the chat, uh, little chat box up in the top right-hand corner. Um, when I'm doing the presenting, Christina will kind of facilitate that and then vice versa. When she's teaching, I'll kind of keep an eye on that. So if you have questions, um, if you want to just type them in that box, uh, we do ask that you mute. Good morning. Is it Gina? Hi, Gina. So we're just getting started. Um, we just kind of introduced ourselves and we'll we'll kind of jump right into this. But if you have questions, put it in the chat and Christina will kind of facilitate while I am going through the instruction. And um, again, these will be recorded. So if you have, you know, need have a need to come back and look at it, or if you want to share it with your team, if you find some invaluable information, um, we'll have we'll we'll let you all know where where we end up kind of housing all of these recordings. So I'm actually going to start by pulling up the. Um, just a little guide for us. So these are a series, <clears throat> excuse me, of mini professional developments will be on for just about a half an hour. Um, and I'm going to go to the next slide here. These are the setup for the next weeks. You know, you're not that. presenting right now. Oh. Oops, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I was just guiding myself, you know. There we go. Um, so here's here's the schedule of the next week's, um, this week and next week's uh, professional development little mini PDs. Again, they'll be about a half an hour each. Uh, that was all listed in the email that was sent to you by, um, by your coaches. So everything we do here in Canyons goes back to our uh, MTSS framework. I'm sure you're very familiar with that. Unless you're new, this will be kind of your guide for everything that we do in Canyons. So again, the schedule came to you in your email and I'm going to scoot down to slide nine. That's the Canvas style guide. That's what we're going to be covering today is the Canvas style guide. So your learning intentions today are going to, uh, we're going to set up your navigation and we're going to set up teacher, um, your account settings and go through a couple things in there. And then Christina will go over some design elements for when you are creating your content. So I think I actually have two of these up. So at, at the Tech Summit, if you uh, participated in the in-person and online, if you've already gone through that, you uh, have been introduced to this Canvas course expectations and Canyons District style guide checklist. So I've highlighted on here what we're going to go through today. Um, when you, if you, you know, it forced me to make a copy. So I kind of have my own that I can go through and actually kind of do as a checklist. But these two columns are the things that we're going to cover today. So we're going to go through, we're going to show you how to change your profile picture and notification preferences. There is a new feature in Canvas where you're able to put um, a little spot next to your name where it shows your pronoun. So um, if you were at the Tech Summit, Camille briefly went through that. It's just a great way, you know, a lot of times if, you know, with different unique names um, and, you know, preferences, you you can put it how you want to be referred to, you know, him, her, she kind of thing. Uh, we'll go through the course navigation. So 
Um, from what I understand, we have elementary people on here now. I am also gonna go through the secondary because this is recorded for future reference. And then Christina will go through the design elements that um, are things to consider as you're building your Canvas courses. So let's just jump right over to Canvas. I'll give you a second if you wanna jump into your Canvas course. Um, just a couple little things while you're getting there. So if you click on the courses tab, this will be where you see all of your courses and there's a all courses button at the bottom. I'm going to get there. There we go. If you notice, I have these little stars that are filled in. Um, if you star one of your courses, it will show up on your dashboard. I like to do that just to kind of weed out some of the courses that I'm not currently doing something with. Um, you probably don't have as many as I do, but um, there are definitely, it kind of weeds out some of the, the courses. So you have just your active courses in your dashboard. So we're going to scoot right up here to the top of that sidebar to account. If you notice, I do have my profile picture already chosen, but I'll show you how I did that. Um, yours, I think will just be like a generic letter or, you know, a generic symbol. If you haven't chosen one that is specific with your face. Um, so on here, you've got your notifications, files, settings, e-portfolios, e shared content, badges, and QR for mobile login. Some of these I don't really even reference very much, but where we're gonna go today for our teacher account settings is to the third one down, at least that's the third one down on mine. We're gonna click settings here. Um, so this is just kind of a little snapshot of, of what you already have your stuff set up to be. So in here, if you click on that little icon again, I've already changed my profile picture, so mine is there. But if you click on it, this is where you're able to either upload a picture if you had one on your computer already, or if you want, you can uh, click the second little tab over that is take a picture. That will take a picture right inside can you know inside Canvas. Your camera will turn on, and you can take a picture right from there. I'm not going to upload a new one because I've already already have mine loaded. But it's nice to kind of personalize that way when your students are on, they can see and kind of put a face to to who you know which course they're in. This is especially valuable when in the middle school and high school when students have multiple teachers. Um, especially at the beginning of the year as they're getting to know you, they can quickly see and put a face with the name to the course. All right, so before I jump to notifications on a different tab, I'm gonna show you where you can do your pronoun. So over here on the right hand side, if you choose, you can click edit settings. And this is again, a new feature in Canvas, even I think since last spring when you um, had classes in the springtime. But if you would like, you can choose right here, she, her, he, him, or they, them. So again, that's just an option. That's a new thing. They'll cover that in the new um, things that are new to Canvas as well. And then when you're done and you've chosen something here, I'll go ahead and do she, her, um, click your update settings, make sure to update your settings and that will save, um, save that for you. So there's a couple other things in here that you may need to go through at some point if you have questions that come up, but really all of this is set up based on um, how you were set up in Skyward. So it's, it's already kind of set up for you. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna go through is, or I'm sorry, not navigation, notifications. So back over here on the side panel, the first option is notifications. Uh, Christina, is there anything else I missed in settings that you wanted to cover? The only thing I would point out, you have it because you've done it under registered services. You've linked your Google Drive account. If teachers haven't done that, it will show up under other services and they will just need to click it and link it with their CSD docs email. Okay, great. Thank you. So that again is down here. It says that I've linked up to my uh, CSD docs. Perfect. Okay. 
So notifications, that's the top one here. This to me gets a little overwhelming. There's a long list of different notifications you can set up. Um, you will actually only have one. This was from when I had a different name. You'll have your email address and push notifications. Uh, what I encourage you to do is, is to go through and, and basically change them to how, how best suits you. Um, if you have noticed getting a lot of emails, you know, from Canvas and you're like, why am I getting all these notifications? This is where you're going to want to come in and change them. So your little guide is up here at the top. Uh, if it's a check, if your if your little green box over here is on the check mark, it will notify you right away and it'll send you an email. Um, there's the send daily summary. If you want to have a summary of all of these things listed, a weekly summary or don't send me anything at all. So again, you kind of just need to go through and you know, mine may look a little different than what yours is. Even Christina's may look different than mine. Um, it really is just how much, how much do you wanna get notified for all of these course activities? So I'll give you a minute to kind of go through and, and make your choices and you can always come back and change these. There's no uh, save button or anything at the bottom. So once you make your decision, it that is gonna be what it is. So you know, due dates on things. If you're currently in a course, you may want to be notified every day if there's something due. Um, this is a great place to guide your students through as well. Um, you know, you don't want them changing everything to don't send me anything, then they won't get any notifications. Now, I put mine weekly because as a teacher in, in Canvas and as a coach, I don't want to see due dates come through every single day. It just, it gets to be too much in my email inbox. Um, again, with grading, grading policies, same kind of thing. Uh, course content, so that means anytime course content has been updated, I, I don't really need to know that, so I've turned that off. Um, and files, again, if somebody puts a file in any of these courses that we as coaches share, I, I don't really need to be notified. However, announcements, those are things I do wanna be notified. I want to be notified right away if somebody posts an announcement because that's something, you know, it's an announcement. I feel that's an important thing that they want to share with me. So I have that sent directly and right away. Announcements created by me, I turned that off because I made the announcement. I figure I made the announcement. I know what it is. I'm going to, I don't need to be notified. So I'll give you just a couple minutes to go through. Um, there's a couple I want to highlight that I have as, as notify right away, um, grading, uh, invitations. So if you get invited to a course, I want to be notified. I don't necessarily need to be notified every time somebody submits something though. So, you know, you'll kind of want to go through, um, go through this list on your own. Um, but if you have questions right now on any of these in particular, go ahead and jump on that chat. Or um, if you're watching this as, as the recording, feel free to reach out to your ed tech or um, achievement coach and they can kind of help you through if you have questions on that. One that um, frequently has come up as a question to me, if you're in a course and there is a discussion, like you're participating as a student in a discussion, Every time somebody posts in a discussion, they're like, why am I getting notified that some other teacher is, is um, you know, posting in that discussion? I've turned that off. Um, again, different, you know, different, different preferences for, for what your needs are. Uh, I think that is going to pretty much cover notifications. Christina, is there anything that you think I have left out or that you want to add on that? Nope, you got it all. Okay, perfect. All righty. So we will jump over to our course navigation. Again, I'm going to show you on here. We're going to go through um, the K-5 required and optional and the K-6 required and optional. And before I show you right away in Canvas, um, one, of the feed, one of the things that we got for feedback in the spring from parents was 
you know, I have a kid in kindergarten, I have a kid in fifth grade, I have a kid in sixth and a kid in 12th. And all of my Canvas courses kind of are looking a little bit different and not super easy to navigate. So as a district um, guideline kind of, you know, expectation, they have pulled together the things that they have as a requirement and as optional. There are several different things that you can add, um, but these are the ones that they're saying these are required. And really, if you start putting too many different buttons on that navigation, and I'll show you that in a minute, it, it starts to get a little bit too confusing, especially depending on which grade your kids are in. If your kids are in multiple grades, you know, as a parent trying to help them navigate. So they kind of narrowed it down to make it the easiest for the user on the other on the other end. So I'm going to come back to my Canvas tab. I'm going to go right. I'm just going to jump into my kind of sandbox course. And just as a little plug, your sandbox course um, was mentioned in the Tech Summit. And basically, it's a place for you to play. Literally think about it like a sandbox outside with sand in it. It's a place to play around. You know, before you put things live on your um, on your class course pages, you want to test it out. Um, a lot of the courses are not even uploaded quite yet because we're still going through the registration process and your secretaries are working endlessly to get all of that figured out with all the things going on right now and who's going to be at home and who's going to be online. So you may not see your um, courses right away or right, you know, as of today. So creating this kind of sandbox course is a great place for you to kind of practice. Mine is called Gothard. That's my last name and it's my practice course. So I'm going to jump right into that. So when they refer to the navigation panel, that's basically what you see here on the side or what the students see on the side. So as a teacher, um, I see all of them, but if you notice this little eyeball, if you hover over it, that means it's disabled for students. Um, you'll see it because you're, you're using these buttons, you know, throughout the, as you're creating your course. But where we're going to go is to settings at the very bottom of that little side navigation panel. And then you have these tabs across the top. You have course details, sections, navigation, apps, and features. For today, we're going to go into navigation. And I'm going to actually change this right now to kind of mirror what the K-5 is going to be. And then I'll show, um, which is very similar for the required for um, 6 through 12 as well. Um, so if you notice, there's this kind of top section, and then there's some text, and then there's this bottom section. So if you scroll down, you'll see that there are a bazillion different things that you can put on that navigation panel. To, to adjust that and to make it kind of fit that required piece, all you do, and it tells you right here, is simply drag the items here to hide them from students. So what is up top is what they will see. What is down below is going to be that little hidden piece, that little eyeball for the students. So the first one that we have required on the list is home. I already have that up here. I, If you notice, there's no three little dots here. Home, I think, is that's not an option. You just have your, your home button. The second one that we're going to drag up, and I'm going to put them right in order and just demonstrate, you simply click and drag it is announcements. The third one on the list is modules, and the fourth one on the list is grades. So these three down here are ones that I don't want my students to see, so I'm going to drag them below that text, so it tells me here that these are going to be now hidden from view. So you have the four that are required right here. For elementary, there are some optional ones. The optional for, for elementary are Google Drive, Clever, badges and connect ed. Now, before you jump in and say, oh, I, I want those on there. If you're not utilizing that tool on a regular basis, there's really not a need for you to have it on, on the student's navigation panel. Um, the ones for, the one that came up that was on the style guide in the past was syllabus. And that is an optional one for secondary. 
Uh, I think I agree with that in terms of the need to have the syllabus. So, you know, we, a syllabus is kind of your overall, you know, summary of what you're going to cover for the year. Now, where we came into problems with that in the fall, or I'm sorry, in the spring and in the past, was if you have that syllabus there and it's a button for the students to choose, they click on it. They want to explore, they're going to click on it. The issue that comes up is anything that you have in your course, whether it was is something, okay, so let's say we're starting in the fall, okay? You, you've prepped up your course, you're set to go through first the first quarter or the first grading period. Everything that you have from September to November is going to be listed there. It will freak kids out and it has, and it makes parents see things that are not necessarily due at that point, but they see it on the list and they want to know what they need to do and they want to know how to get that assignment done. Well, meanwhile, you're like, that's not even going to show up in the course until October. So they have for at least for elementary, um, that is one that they have decided to take off. And I fully agree. I think that's a great idea. Now for secondary, where students are only going to be in a course, you know, for one grading period, that can be a little bit more beneficial. So if that's something you choose as a secondary, you would simply come down and see if I can find it again, because I scooted. Oh, I, it's way at the top here. If you want that on your list in secondary, simply drag it up to the top. Okay. Um, the other ones, again, you can choose choose to use or not, which is some of them are, are kind of nice to have, Are is Google Drive. Um, really, it's not going to necessarily log them into Google Drive. And that's the same for Clever um, and for some of these other buttons. It's simply a shortcut. So one that, that we had talked about having on there, you know, or a teacher had asked is Nearpod. They use Nearpod all the time. Um, that's not going to, that's not going to be as much, you know, as much of a quick login, but more of a um, shortcut, a little shortcut button. So the other ones were Newzella. So in secondary, Newzella is a program that they are providing for all of the um, for all of the secondary schools and students. So that might be one that you choose to have on your navigation panel. Um, the other one is Connect Ed. That is a uh, the new program for our science standards. So if you're you know they didn't put that as a mandatory or kind of a required thing because it's you know, it's fourth and fifth and then secondary. So they had that as an optional one. Um, Christina, is there anything else? Oh, I real quick, sorry, and then I'll come back to you, Christina. There is a button over here on the side menu that is student view. So I'm gonna click on that real quick. This is always a fabulous little tool if you're like, I wanna know what my kids see. So, oh, you know what I forgot real quick. That's what I was going to say. Hold Make on. sure before Make sure. you the page that you Make click sure save. You save it. <laughs> yes, because I just noticed that. See, again, that was a great example, actually. I want to get rid of these. There we go. And save at the bottom. See, that was a perfect example of what you need to not do and remember to do. <laughs> so make sure you save it. And then it didn't it kind of blinks, but it doesn't really do much. But then again, when you want to go to your student view to check this out, now you notice that these things have saved and are, are what you want them to be. So when you're done, you just leave that student view. And now you're back. You see all of the different buttons. You see the eyeballs here for what's disabled and you're back into your teacher view. Was that what you were going to remind me, Christina? Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Any questions about that before we scoot along? All right, Christina, I'm going to stop presenting and let you jump on to 
um, I think you weren't going to necessarily share your screen, but go through those design elements. Yep. So the learning intention for this part was to consider the design elements when creating content. So um, the keyword there is consider. These are things to think about when you are creating your content. So the first one is to use images that represent real people and represent diversity. So um, when you're adding images, think about using images of real people, not necessarily clip art. You can use clip art, you can use bitmojis, but just don't make that the only thing that you use. Think about using those real people, um, especially right now where kids are only going to see us in masks. Having images of real people, I think might help them feel a little more comfortable um, to see what they're used to seeing instead of what the normal is right now. The second one is the length of your content pages. So for this one, think about when you're reading a document that you have to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll through. For this one, less is more. The less the kids have to scroll through, the more engaged they'll be with the page. So think about it like, um, you know, if you're as the adult, if you see something that's super long, you typically will skim and you might miss important information. And that's the same with our students. They're going to get turned off of scrolling through the information if you have things that are too long. So just think about that when you're creating your pages. If you have a lot of information, you might break it up, maybe put it in um, a couple different pages that they read through for the assignment or things like that. The next one is the accessibility. So um, for this one, it's doing things like labeling your images, labeling what they are for your students. Also considering having closed captions on any videos that you share through YouTube for your students that may be hard of hearing or even just for your kiddos to read along as you're speaking in your videos. Okay, so that's um, for accessibility. And then, um, the next one to consider is to embed your content inside of Canvas instead of just putting a link that takes them outside of Canvas. So for example, with Google Drive or a YouTube video that you want them to watch, if you can use the embed carrot tool and put them right into your Canvas so that your students are looking right on your screen, right on their screen I mean, instead of clicking the link, going outside of Canvas and then having to figure out how to come back in, that is something that will help your students and will save ultimately save time because they don't have to click around and figure out which tab is which. So that is a good thing to consider when creating your um, Canvas page. The next thing is to consider the contrast of text color and background color. Uh, when Camille shares this one, she always talks about students that are colorblind. So if you have like green background with red text, you know, around Christmas time and it's fun, your colorblind students literally can't see that. So to be aware, colors are fun. I love pink, I love the brights, but sometimes it is too much. And we just need to be aware of what does this look like to our students and how will this affect students that may have colorblind or other eye issues and um, you know I don't want kids to hate pink so I try to use it sparingly but I still use it I just don't use it as like everywhere um, that's the main color so just consider that and then use consistent and appropriate fonts and colors so um, in Canvas, there's not a lot of options with fonts. Um, you don't get to really choose a lot. But the keyword I think here is to be consistent. I don't know if you've ever seen something where the title's in one font, and then there's like the first paragraph's in a font, and then it's a different font, and then it's a different font. It makes it really hard to read, um, even for me as an adult. And so we just want to be consistent in the font and the colors that we choose. It's okay to use colors, but you know, we don't want a rainbow on every page because that will be overwhelming for our students, especially our littles. And then the last item to consider is to use icons to represent specific learning tasks. So in here, if you've taken any courses over the summer from us, you'll have noticed that there's like a target for whenever there's a learning intention. There might be a star for something that's really important that we want to draw your attention to. Maybe you have an exclamation point for things that are extra important. Um, and this can be really helpful, especially this year where we may have kids coming and going due to the um, coronavirus. 
So if you have an icon, let's say that if a student's absent, they know to look for the star and that's what they miss for that day, then that will be so helpful for you as a teacher because every time they see that star, they know, oh, this is what was important from today. This is what I need to do at home tonight. Maybe you have um, a, uh, you know, exclamation point, like I said earlier, that tells what your um, important things from, or your important um, learning intentions were for the day so that they can quickly just find on your course what, exactly what they missed. And especially even in class, you can say, okay, everyone, go to ELA, find the important learning intention for today, ready, read. And they you just train them to get there quickly um, because they know exactly what to look for instead of having to search the text for the learning intention. Danae, anything else on that one? Uh, just uh, really, I going through courses, that last one, I think, you know, it, just because it was the last one you were talking about, it, it, that has helped me as an, an a, even as a participant in courses, you know, I know right away, boom, that's what that icon means. And especially for the younger kids, you know, and parents as they're going, oh, what's on my to-do list? If they know it's always going to be the bullseye or the, you know, whatever, um, that's helpful. And you know, just really consider, you know, any of the options, even if you don't have a kid who, you know, that you know is colorblind, be sensitive to, to all of those different needs um, as you're creating, as you're creating things. So, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. So awesome. So just to review the success criteria, it was that uh, you would know you were successful when your navigation and account settings are set up correctly and when I'm considering design elements as I am creating course content. So we went over those um, two things and then we talked about things to consider. Are there any questions before we end this recording? Not seeing right. any. Okay, thanks for joining us this right. morning, ladies. And just refer back to that schedule. We've got these all week and next week throughout the day and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks guys. Thanks.